Hey, it's Reed from Emerald Lotus Divination, a website that shares free weekly tarot spreads and other tarot resources. Today I'm so excited because I'm doing a video that I actually didn't anticipate to film at all. Um, but as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a um, unboxing and a first look through at the Cosmic Cycles Tarot. Oh, sorry, I don't know how it got a little bit wet. <laughs> That's not a great first impression. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that. I guess I got some water um, on the box or something, but I'm really excited to be doing this Cosmic Cycles Tarot unboxing because I actually had never heard of this deck until my mother-in-law got it. And she started sending me some pictures from the deck every single day. And I really loved it. I thought it was so beautiful. And then one day I woke up to a delivery at my house and she actually purchased and sent me this awesome little deck. So I haven't opened it or looked at it at all besides the cards that I saw when she sent them to me. So I've seen a handful of the cards, but not the complete deck. It says the Cosmic Cycles Tarot follows the life of 16 characters living in modern society. May the author of the deck, Martina Razzo, um, she stated on their Kickstarter page that she found it really difficult to memorize all of the card meanings and that's why she wanted to create a deck that was I guess a little bit different than most tarot decks so it would really tell a story that you could actually really understand um, and so I guess she worked with uh, Miriam who is the illustrator of the deck so the two of them collaborated on this deck to create it um, there's also an extra card in here that I can see that says thank you it has a bunch of characters on it I can't remember if I said this already um, but the deck is supposed to be inclusive. Um, the order also came with a guidebook, a decent sized guidebook. There's not too many words in it, but the book itself is quite um, hefty. The other thing that came in the order was this little pin. It's a little witch enamel pin. Very cute. And it came in this cute little bag as well. Okay, so before I spend too much time yapping away, I'm going to give us a first look and we can kind of unbox this together. So first impressions, the cardstock is awesome. I love how thick it is. It really actually reminds me of the Star Tarot, which is my favorite cardstock I think to work with. Um, maybe this one might be a little bit stickier than that one. That one is like my, I, I judge every deck based on the Star Tarot's cardstock. Um, but this one is really nice. It's, it's not too thick. It'll be easy to shuffle. Um, but it's also very matte, which I actually don't see uh, cards. I don't think I have any decks that are this matte. Anyway, they're also borderless, which I think we can all at this point agree is something we like. <laughs> so this is the full card. She's rushing off to catch her airplane. I love it. It's very cool. Magician. We have uh, DJ. Very interesting making magic on the dance floor. I feel like that's like an Usher song or something. <laughs> High Priestess. It looks kind of like maybe morning has come and she's been up all night uh, doing tarot readings. Uh, we've got the Empress taking care of her daughter, doing her hair for her. So interesting to have two people in the Empress card. Okay, so the Emperor, sorry. I don't know like, why do I keep touching things that are wet and then getting them on these? It's embarrassing. We have the Emperor card who is a probably father, someone who is working and also taking care of who is hopefully his daughter. <laughs> I don't know why I got stranger vibes, <laughs> but I don't think he's a stranger. I'm sure it's his daughter. So he's busy, but he's also supporting his family and his daughter. Very similar to the, um, the Empress. So they're kind of doing the same thing in supporting others, putting others before themselves kind of thing, which is quite interesting actually. I don't think I've ever seen a depiction like that. Then we have the Hierophant, Hierophant, where we have a bunch of different people praying and we have some prayer beads. Oh, this one's super unique. Then we've got the Lovers, which is giving some support. I love the animals in the background. Immediately I, I noticed that, really cute. Don't necessarily get like the duality, but in a way you do. It's almost like we almost get like a yin yang with the two different hair colors and everything. We can almost see a bit of duality in the lovers, which is something I always like to look for. Then we've got the chariot. Oh, this is so fun. We've got them driving, going super fast it looks like. And we've got their little friends in the front seat of the car with them. Super cute. Going to get stuff done. Strength card. Oh, I remember this one from my mother-in-law sending it to me. Really beautiful, so we're finding strength in uh, rebuilding, rehabilitation. 
I like that a lot. Determination. Ah, then we've got our lovely hermit. I know this is a lot of people's favorite. I do always tend to like the hermit cards as well. Wheel of Fortune. We've got Justice, which is taking a fairly literal approach to justice with the courtroom proceeding. We've got the judge listening, mulling things over. We've got the hanged man, who actually is not upside down, but kind of, they're hanging. And they are looking at things from a new perspective. Are they smoking? Oh yeah, they are, they are smoking. Okay, talk about new perspectives if they are smoking a joint um, and <laughs> talk about taking a break uh, if they're smoking a cigarette. Very interesting, I've never seen the hangman smoking anything. Um, we've got the death card. This is really interesting that we actually get the skeleton, we can see the skeleton of the death card inside her on her outfit in the reflection and she is giving herself a chop. Changing, reinventing. These are very, these are very cinematic cards, for sure. They definitely feel a lot like a movie or a, a graphic novel or something like that. Temperance, she's finding balance at yoga class. The devil. So she's obviously feeling upset in the background. We can see that he's been drinking. Um, they're chained to each other in a messy apartment. Lines are closed. Very interesting. Toxic, for sure. And we've got the tower, which I feel like this is a really good depiction of the tower. Watching their home burn. But they're all out safely, even though even their little friend, their little animal companion is with them as well. So yeah, definitely change in the tower. The star, this one's so cute. So she's having a little picnic watching the stars. I really love this depiction. The star is always one of my favorite cards and I find sometimes they can be quite boring, but I do like that one a lot. The moon. So we have um, someone is tr maybe sneaking out of the house, it looks like, and going to see another friend. I wonder what this one means specifically, this moon card. Where did I put that book? I wanna look up the moon card to see what they say. Okay, so I don't really get why... Okay, there's something I'm missing about this deck that I'm seeing now. It's putting the, making the court cards explore through the major arcana. So in The Fool, it's actually the Page of Wands is rushing through the airport. In the magician, okay, the magician is just the magician. <laughs> I don't know. <sighs> okay, so I don't really know what's going on, but that's okay, you know? Sometimes we don't know what's going on. But anyway, the moon says, Page of Swords relationship with Page of Cups is a secret one she must keep for now. She is just learning about herself and wants to know who she truly is before revealing it to others. She cannot, however, control others like her dog from spilling it before her. Okay. Oh, I'm not gonna ask any questions. Okay, we're just gonna move on. So, the sun. Exploring uh, interests. Got judgment, graduating. Got the world. All the lights on in a city. Ace of Wands, so we have, again, straying from the traditional aces, but we still have a hand and, we'll, and a paintbrush. So um, what I also read about this deck, they don't necessarily have the wands depicted in the imagery um, in like the traditional sense. So it says that wands still mean creativity, inspiration, and drive, and it's reflected by paintbrushes, pencils, flags, and trees. I wonder why trees? I mean, I guess wands are literally made of wood. Um, and I don't know, yeah. Trees can be inspiring, I suppose. I don't know, really. So I guess the wands, the three of wands, so we have one wand, two wands, three wands. Is that sort of what they're meaning? I like the, the imagery, um, for sure. I'm just a little bit confused on. So maybe the two of wands in this picture are the oars. Honestly, some of you guys are probably gonna laugh at me and be like, Reed, come on. <laughs> Me trying to figure things out. 
Obviously, I've never uh, learned too much about this deck, you can tell. So four of wands, we have people embracing, there's a reunion, and then we have the four pillars on uh, the patio. But basically, this person is playing video games on a TV screen, and they all have little wands. Six of wands, very cute. I love the LGBT, very cute recognition. Uh, Seven of wands, this is a great depiction. I love this one. So he's looking like he's kind of getting beat up by the media. I like this one because you have some people enjoying it and some people scared. I feel like that is definitely eight of wands energy. Nine of wands. So it's starting to snow and they are using a flashlight and trying to get home. Very interesting. I like that they've used snow actually and it's an interesting element to mix with the wands. And we've got the 10 of wands. I like this one too actually. I love these cards. I just think that the um, illustrations are amazing. Like I said, it's very, very cinematic, I, I, I would say. It feels really good. And I, again, I love how it's borderless. So you really just get the full image and the colors are beautiful. I'm not sure how, I feel like the colors might be kind of blown out a little bit just because I do have this light because they are very vibrant. And I just, I don't think they're gonna be coming up quite as vibrant as they are. So we had Page of Wands, Knight of Wands. This kind of confuses me because she it definitely gives me Pentacles vibes. I get where they're going from, like she's climbing a tree, this is the wand, they've kind of done this wand as a tree thing. I find it a little bit confusing, especially if they didn't have uh, the titles at the bottom. I would 100% be interpreting this card as the Pentacles. I'm curious to see what the Pentacles looks like, um, but I get where they were going with it. I don't think it'll bother me to the point where I wouldn't use the deck, like I said. I like that it's actually written, so. It is interesting though, worth noting. Queen of Wands, we have her giving direction on a home that's being built. And the King of Wands is the same character who was the Emperor, I think. And so he's working in the kitchen and he has some people uh, listening to him, probably taking direction from him. Now we get into the cups. Ace of Cups, this is so cute. I love this one. Oh, I think this might be my favorite card so far. I love how they are in a hot air balloon enjoying a glass of wine by themselves. That is like talk about ultimate like luxury and self care of the Ace of Cups. I love that depiction and I love the colors. This deck really, a lot of the cards actually feel like kind of sunrise, sunset. This one is so precious. So it's actually looking like the same characters that we saw on the moon are in the Two of Cups. We have them shopping, having a good time. That's so cute. And so they've done the cups in like smoothies or a coffee that they got at the store. I love that. Four of Cups. Oh, we have her frustrated while trying to learn how to draw. This is very, very cool. I feel like a lot of people would really love this deck because intuitively it does say a lot to you. I feel like if you were a beginner and you weren't really drawn to the Rider weight, this would be a really great deck for you. Five of Cups, we see grief. I love the shadow peering in. Um, really cool. There's a lot of shadows in this deck, which I find really interesting. Six of Cups, we see our friend, the chef again, with his daughter. Very wholesome. Seven of Cups, oh, I've seen this card before. I love it, making her decision of ice creams. So cool. Eight of Cups. That's a harsh one. Oh, the Nine of Cups. Interesting. Oh, wow. So he actually is um, disabled and he has like all of his trophies. So you almost get the sense that maybe this is of times past or maybe it's because we saw him in the strength card as well working through issues. So maybe he's actually, you know, come out um, on the other side with the Nine of Cups. You never know. Like it is a positive card, but it also does still kind of have a little bit of a negative connotation. So you could interpret it either way. Um, very interesting, actually. I love that. Really beautiful card. Then we have the Ten of Cups, which is a wedding celebration. Page of Cups, she is working on something that she's passionate about. We get the Cups vibes through the fish and the fish tank as well. 
Knight of Cups. Oh, <laughs> we have a mixologist, bartender, mixologist. Love that. Queen of Cups, kindergarten teacher, making crowns for her students. So she's obviously nurturing, supporting others. Oh, I'm seeing the cups are, are lined up here. Interesting, very interesting choice. And then we have the King of Cups, who looks kind of lonely, but also sort of satisfied. They're just hanging out with the Ace of Swords. This is a great depiction. Got the Two of Swords with the divorce, the child being torn between two options. I love this depiction. Got the Three of Swords with the traditional heart and three swords on the iPod or music player as they fall asleep. Um, also have a ripped up picture of what seems to be an X and it looks like they're maybe writing some music to kind of get through the hard time. It's a really fun depiction. I mean, fun. As fun as fun can be for a Three of Swords. Then we have the Four of Swords. Okay, so defeating somebody in a game. Six of Swords, so she is leaving her family. We've got uh, Icicles. Definitely a very family-focused deck. Seven of Swords. Eight of Swords, okay, so she is drinking, potentially relapsing. Oh, just, you know, just a little meltdown. Just a little panic attack. Just a little depression, you know, just Nine of Swords things. Then we've got the 10 of Swords. Oh, wow, interesting. So these are all messages or comments that she's having online, potentially with herself, and they're just damaging. I say her, but sorry, I should be saying themselves. I can't see what their gender is. That's great. Really interesting. And we move to the Page of Swords. Ice Skater. Knight. Skateboarder. He's got a little sword on the bottom of a skateboard. Super cool guy. Gives the vibe for sure. We've got the Queen of Swords. Looking kind of stressed. And we have King of Swords. Oh, that's cool. So he's a detective or police officer kind of pu putting it all together. That's cool. Ace of Pentacles. Aw, that's cute. Okay, working together. Four of Pentacles. Saving for that car. Yeah, like I said, I think this deck would be really great for someone that doesn't like the traditional Rider weight but wants to read tarot. It is definitely very intuitive. Five of Pentacles, she's getting kicked out. Okay, so we get the charity. This is so Nine of Pentacles, the, the shopping and looking at herself in the mirror. <laughs> I love it. Great colors in these ones too. And the Ten of Pentacles, this is really cute. I was saying I was curious what the Page of Pentacles was gonna look like because the other one kind of gave more pentacles. The Nate, I understand now kind of how they're going. So the, pa the pentacles clearly in this deck are more a material rather than like the earthy element of pentacle, which some decks take it as more like the natural earthy and material, this deck clearly just does material is pentacle. And so the wands and like exploring new adventures, nature is the wands. So I actually understand now that they stayed true to that. I actually like it. I like that they have the, the wands, the trees kind of going in with the wands. Um, although it doesn't speak to me intuitively right off the hop, the fact that they haven't included a bunch of trees in the pentacle suits it makes sense. I think that's a fair decision. I don't judge that decision. I like it actually. Um, so I just wanted to point that out as well. So this deck would be great for somebody who is just starting out with tarot. Um, like I said, but who maybe didn't want to use the traditional rider weight or just didn't, it didn't speak to them or whatever it may be. Someone that loves Disney, this would be a great deck for, or any kind of animation 
really cool deck, Queen of Pentacles. I love that. It's my mom. This is my mom. Mom, if you're watching, this is you. <laughs> my mom is such Queen of Pentacles vibe, and usually it's very earthy. Oh, someone's at my door. Usually it's very earthy, but this time it's like a fashionista Queen of Pentacles, which is my mom. We're very different in that sense, but I love her for it. And then we have the king. Famous, and I'm gonna go answer the door. Okay, so that concludes our walkthrough of the Cosmic Cycles Tarot deck. I gotta say, I really, really like the deck. At first when I started looking at it, I'm so judgmental. <laughs> But I gotta say, I really actually quite love it. I love that they they decided what they wanted to go for with the deck. They made their decisions creatively and intuitively. And I think it, it worked at the end of the day. Um, was it always the creative decisions I would have chosen? No, but that's what's fun about <laughs> having decks from other people. So I really love all the, all the things they did. I feel like a lot of it made sense. The Minor Arcana to me definitely stood out. Like I really did appreciate the Minor Arcana quite a bit. Major, I liked, but I wouldn't say it's one of my all time favorite Major Arcana decks. But to me, the Major Arcana stands so clearly on its own that I don't need all the symbolism in the cards. I don't need all the messages. Like I don't need the Wheel of Fortune to have all the symbols. Do I appreciate it? Yes. When a deck has it, I love it. But if it doesn't have it, it's not a make or break for me because I know the Wheel of Fortune so well. I don't need it to be depicted in the card necessarily. But for me, the Minor Arcana is more where I feel like having those creative decisions and choices that tell the story I find more helpful just because there's so many minor arcana cards and they all mean something so different so really being able to just get it so quickly on what card it is and what it means I find a lot more helpful um, especially when I'm reading for people and I'm you know pulling a bunch of cards and going very quickly I like to just know exactly what it is and I don't want to have to think about what does this mean and what is wands and oh, which one is this what is arrows like I don't like to have to think about that when I'm reading quickly and intuitively I just want to know what it is and I feel like with this one I definitely know what it is um, and it makes sense to me I, I really appreciated it whereas the the majors maybe don't always make as much sense to me some of them I, I maybe like well creative choice is a bit curious to me personally it doesn't speak super loudly but like I said with them I already know the majors so well and I think so many of us do they're so iconic on their own that for me if the majors don't stand out to me a hundred percent I don't care I don't even notice it really um, and I do think that the artwork is amazing. I think they did a great job. I think the cardstock is really beautiful. It's nice and thick, but it's not too thick. The cards themselves are not too big. I know that's a complaint for a lot of people. These ones will definitely be fairly easy to shuffle with. And I, again, I love the fact that it's borderless. I love the colors. I think it's a really cute deck and I'm very excited to use it and kind of see how I like it as I use it. I always have different interpretations. Um, initially than I do after using it a couple of times and seeing the kinds of messages that it gives but upon first impression I really really love this deck. I think it's for a lot of people. I think a lot of people would love it. Anyways, I feel like I've rambled on for so long <laughs> but if you guys made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Let me know what you guys think of the Cosmic Cycles Tarot. Do you have this deck? Have you ever thought about purchasing it? Is it one that you're skipping out on? Like I said at the beginning, I don't know anything about this deck really in the community. I haven't really seen very many people use it at all. I think besides my mother-in-law and maybe one or two people here and there. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think of it. And have you heard of it before? And will you look into it after? Thank you guys so much for being here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.